It's not about motivation. When is new discipline? Wake up and win today. <laughs> discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with boxer Spencer Firon. Moments after Hamza Shira stops Liam Williams in one round. Tell me, were you shocked to see that? One million percent I was shocked to see that. Um, Liam Williams is a damn good fighter, right? And when you came in here, a lot of people was, was kind of contemplating like maybe there could be an upset. A lot of people were saying that, right? I couldn't see an upset, but I could see it going late and then him getting a stoppage. But for him to put in a performance like that in front of so many, uh, so many people as well and his own fan base, which is really cool, I have to commend the young man. And you know why I really commend him? I don't keep this thing totally 100, right? Here is a young man that is embraceatory of the struggle of people of his religious domination. Where there's other Muslims who are keeping their mouth shut because they're scared to open their mouth. So I commend Hamza for that. I really do rate him for that. I rate him for the fact that uh, his family have helped with fundraisers that we've been on as well. Like, so I, I commend him for that. But when I'm dealing with his boxing, he has a very, very deep intellect to the fight game. And he is totally tunnel vision to boxing. I spent some time with him. Me and he was on a plane together going out to Dubai. And I spent some time with him and speaking to the young man. He's a lot older than his age suggests because of, the, because of his intellect. And that was a, a very, very nice thing to see. And it's also very nice to see like how humble he is. But he's all business in there. Like, like, Boom Boom Andrade couldn't do that to, to, to Liam Williams. Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank Jr. couldn't do that to Liam Williams. And he just blips them in one round. And that was a good Liam Williams. Because uh, I know Gary Lockett really was my longtime friend. We've been buddies since amateur days. He's a damn good trainer. Liam prepared and he turned over every stone. But he couldn't turn over this stone. And like, it was difficult to turn over a stone that the stone invariably came a mountain. Frank Warren just made the comparison between Tommy Hearns and there, no, we're only saying that because of the hype. It's totally different. He, he's more, no, he's more like Oscar De La Hoya. Go watch that. Love, bro. He's more like Oscar De La Hoya. You watch how he, he's there, how his hands are, how he sets his hands, how he throws out his shots very much. And he's got quick hands as well. And I like how it, he's got punch dexterity. He's got a really good variation because that uppercut was like something else. All the credit in the world should be given to him. I love the kid, man. He's a very, very good kid. I wish him all the best. Like always, there's going to be a big bunch of people are going to be saying Liam Williams was shot. They were saying, they were saying, they were saying it before the fight. But the point I want to raise is the way he got dropped from that jab. He, Chris Eubank dropped him four or five times the same sort of way, but he wasn't able to finish him. Hamza did. You, you just ask the question and, and answer the question at the same time. Hamza, we just saw a special, special talent. And you know what the main major thing is this is because I know like I know the rest of his team like um, Taz Khan and all that, and they spend a lot of money on these training camps, right? And I was saying, are you crazy, right? They spend they got he's heavily invested in. You know what I mean? Got big up legal blows as well, right? My guy Adil, and he he does the real real work. He grafts, man. He grafts, and we're seeing it. We're seeing, and they're very clever. They have surrounded him with like ex-champions, ex-world champions. Colin McMillan works with them as well. They rub off on him. And we saw that today. You know what I mean? That was a culmination of the, 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 the years for this one moment. And we saw that. And the sky's the limit for the young man. I wish him nothing but the best. Definitely so. Um, got to ask you about Anthony Yard. He looked amazing. And you know what? I want to give credit to his opponent because no matter what, he's going to get paid the same amount, but he got up three times and he was taking the beating in there. And sometimes people don't give them sort of guys a respect. Well, the people who don't want to give those guys respect don't really know the game. You have to give any man that steps to the ring respect. But even more so, when you're on a hide into nothing, but you keep on going, you, all the credit in the world should be given to that young man. You know what I mean, all the... Listen, that was some hot... You heard the, the, the thud of those shots. They were hurtful shots. And the guy tried to suck it up and the guy tried to continue fighting. It was, a, it was a tall order, but it was a very, very sharp anti-yard. And Anti was like, yeah. Tundi was like, I went in the change room first. Tundi was like, Man, little shots into the body. Everything is picture perfect punching. You know what I mean? We got to see him and Boatsi face off for the first time. He's quite friendly, but do you think if that fight does get made, is it going to stay friendly or will we see some spikes? Silly, that would be the most 
brutal, vicious fight that you could ever imagine. Right? The punching power of Yard, the the hit and, and the hit and fire back shots from Joshua Boatsy, the passion that, that both of them were going throw in there. You know what I mean? The 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 little uh rivalries in between the camps, it'll be a really, really good fight. It will it will not be like what we saw Joshua Boatsy when Joshua Boatsy fought Danazis last week, which was a good fight but when an exciting fight. These two going in there will be fireworks. I'm looking forward to that fight being made. Frank Warren can make this. I mean, Queensbury, they can make this. Frank Warren don't play. He can make this. You know what I mean? If not, Ben Shalom better come up with some big money. He's got, he's got that sky paper. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, 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 don't, I don't business. Where, whatever network is on. You know what I mean? Like I said, the, the Qatari and Royal family have shown great interest in this. Tundi's got the emails, how much they've offered. It was like £5 million. So, you know what I mean? Let's see what happens, man. You know when you keep saying that £5 million pound Qatari family, is that, is that you kind of naming your price that... Uh, ben no, Shalom or Frank's could have named no, get no, better? Not, not, not at all. I'm telling you, what's offered? Tundi can show you the paper. We should be offered. So let's see what happens. Okay. Last thing I want to speak to you about, I spoke to Shane Fury yesterday. We talked really about. Good interview. I watched it. Really I really appreciate good. that, Spence. And we talked about, I don't know if you watched the one I released today. He talked about this whole mole situation. And he obviously said Greg Murray is the only person in the camp that knows Johnny Nelson. However, he said whatever Johnny's been saying is all false. So even if it was Greg, he's been feeding him uh, lies. Well, if it is, if it is, it is. Uh, that's none of my business to tell you the honest truth. Because when I say anything in defence of Tyson Fury, I'm trying to live up his bottom, right? I got a phone call earlier today from Spencer Brown. You know what I mean, big up Spencer. You know what I mean, and I'm glad because I'm glad that I weren't around the camp. Because if they said it was a mole, straight away they're gonna blame me. So I'm glad that I weren't there. How about that one? No, listen to me. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this again. Get behind Tyson Fury. I was watching um, Usyk versus Daniel Dubois. And then it made even to the realization, even that bad Tyson Fury of October 28th, um, 2003, yeah, would still be Usyk, right? Even though Usyk's very clever and all the rest of it, yeah, 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 yeah. Tyson Fury's gonna beat up Usyk. I just want you to know that. And that's not me trying to live up anybody's bottom. I'm telling you now, Tyson Fury's still going to beat up Usyk. Have you always had that opinion? Because obviously I can't think that far back. All these people are suddenly thinking that you know, your team uh, Fury, but no, if I put if I put you on the spot right now, so if, if Fury does beat him and then him and AJ meet down the line, without going all technical, who's the favourite going into that based on what you've seen recently? It depends on what, what, what Anthony Joshua does against Ngannou. You know what I mean? And then after that, I could tell you who would be the favourite, right? Um, because Anthony Joshua was very, very impressive against Wallin the other day. You know what I mean? All the credit in the world should be given to him and his team. Let's be 100 on this one, right? But you got to go off of last performances. And we're saying like um, Tyson Fury's last performance was lacklustered, yeah? And Tyson Fury didn't know what he was going to get against Ngannou. But he know what he did get when he got that left hook in the fourth round and went over, right? So it's going to be totally different for him versus an Usyk, but it's more to do with like how Tyson Fury performs against Usyk because Anthony Josh has been up with Usyk twice and come second best twice, right? But we shall see. Like I said, we sit down with bated breath uh, to say like how this, how how both guys' fights go respectively, and then we'll take it from there. You're going to be put on the spot when that fight happens, uh, Spencer. Hope, hopefully, it happens. Yeah. The, the conflict of what? Let me just tell you this now. Yeah. I'm seeing two British men. Yeah. Two British men from from impoverished backgrounds. Yeah financially impoverished backgrounds, but they were rich in substance of family and community, making a ton of load of money for the simple thing of this thing called prize fighting, yeah? Where the, the original rules of the Queensbury rules came in in 1865, synonymous simply because that was the same year of the Civil War, and it was the same year when slavery ended, right? And now we have a different kind of fight. We have cultural identity fights. We have different kind of fighting now. What boxing embellishes, right, to its, to its high point, is that two men can go into the ring and pit their skill against one another. And when they do this, what they are doing, they're encapsulating what the universe is made out of. Because the universe with all its genius and galaxies, which is ever expanding, these men have a chance to fight and it goes out to universe, to the universe, 
that they have parts of history, what they're building. So when I see two men who have come from the country that I love emphatically, who have earned from a sport that I love emphatically, I'm just happy that, that boxing's won, but these two gentlemen have improved their lives and the lives of their family and others. Spence, on that note, I appreciate your time. Have a safe journey home. Thank you very much. Big up, Boxing King Mida. Fear. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and their opinions of others.